we've all heard that before, haven't we? It's every kid's dream to play for their favourite football team and scoring the winning goal. Or to sing and dance like their musical idols. Or to drive the sports car from the posters on their wall. Where does it all go? Hello, Porsche GB have loaned me this car and I promise you one thing, right now, I have imposter syndrome. <laughs> Full disclaimer. <laughs> they haven't given me a brief or anything, nor will they see it before it goes live. Not only have they let me loose with it, but there's also no red tape as to what I can say. So I'm at complete liberty to tell you if there's anything I don't like. This is the 911 Carrera, the 911 in its purest form, which is very, very important. And I'll explain why a little bit later on. One thing, I have this coffee mug here. On it says, if you can read that, Porsche 911 cliche pot. Pretty self-explanatory, but any time that I say anything cliche, I'll put some money in here. The point being is that I'll refrain from using cliches. Iconic image, best sports car, driving machine. Driving God. Things like that. This is my first proper experience in a Porsche. I've actually driven this one for about 15, 20 minutes before. I've driven the Targa and the 911 Turbo, but most of those were through central London and I barely ever got out of, well, second gear. I really wanted to film this car because I want you behind your phone or your tablet or your TV to live vicariously through me. This one is for you because I'm that kid who had his face buried in car magazines ever since I was probably about seven, eight years old in Max Power magazines, Auto Trader, Auto Express, and whatever you could think of. And my, my room was covered in posters. Granted, some of them were Max Power magazines for obvious reasons, but I was that kid that had the dream that one day I would own something like this or l l just even drive one. So here I am behind the wheel of one of the best sports cars in the world. Now I'm also aware that that phrase has been a little bit overused on the internet. Hell, I've used it on the G63 video that I done saying that it was one of the best cars in the world because it could do pretty much everything. With that said, I'm someone who can debunk that phrase pretty quickly by saying, at what? It's the best car in the world at what? Then it just becomes a little bit more subjective. Let me take you back to an Einstein quote. He said that if we judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking that it's stupid, or she. Now, let's apply that logic to a car. If I judge this car by its practicality or its ability to go off-road, I can render it useless. Unless, of course, it's the new Dakar. So then, how do we judge this car? Is it the fastest? No, but it's fast enough. Is it the most technologically advanced? Nope, but it's very clever. Is it the loudest? No, not particularly. Is it practical then? I wouldn't say that was one of its strong suits, no. Is it the quickest around any given racetrack? Well, that particular job is reserved for the likes of the GT3, GT3 RS, and of course the GT2. However, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. shifter says 911 just in case you forget what you're in it's not maybe not forget but just like a daily reminder 
911 spells out its ability to do all of those things to the highest standard. Its bloodline is as good as any other sports car, past or present. You can rev the crap out of it, you can throw it, you can toss it. Not only is it completely obedient with each command, it won't leave you with claw marks. It can leave your average driver, said average driver, feeling like a professional race car driver. I know that most of us are going to prefer our Porsches with a few more letters and perhaps numbers stuck on the back, including myself, most notably the G, the T and the 3. I've not driven the GT3 myself, but from what I can tell from the world of journalism that it's pretty good. Porsche do offer a whole variety of 911s between this and the GT3, so there's something for everyone. It doesn't matter how hard I push the 911, it never feels like I'm tapping into more than 25-30% of its ability. Maybe that's got something to do with the fact that I'm on public roads, or maybe the size of my cojones just don't allow it. They say that there are a few certainties in life. Death and taxes. Well, I have a few more wet, cold, slippery January in the UK. Even still, all the ESP and the stability programs that Porsche have under here, they're just, they've got their feet up, smoking a cigar in their slippers. They're just completely dormant. Doesn't matter what I show it, what I ask it to do, no fuss. It just deals with every single input with complete ease. And that is an absolute testament to the engineers at Porsche. It's near perfect balance, it's poise, it's big wide rear end, the girthy tires, pinpoint perfect steering make this car an absolute dream to drive. It's just so engaging, it feels so mechanical, it makes me feel like I'm a professional driver. It's a proper driver's car. Okay, that was two in there. A proper driver's car with Apple CarPlay, parking sensors, climate control, heated seats. Also guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about this angle. I actually prefer it to having it on the windscreen. It's on the passenger side window. I just feel like you guys are sitting next to me and you're in with the ride with me. Let me know what you think. And while you're down there, don't forget to um, give this video a like and a subscribe as well. Otherwise you'll have 10 years bad luck. 10 years? That's just not a risk worth taking. 385 brake horsepower, 0 to 62, 4.2 seconds, with a top speed of about 180 miles an hour in case you were wondering. But for all I care, this car can have a top speed of 120 miles an hour, which if you live in Germany might pose a bit of a problem, but not so much in the UK. You see, I am a firm believer that you are only as fast as the car in front of you or as the road would allow you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To me, it's how you get there. I mean, it seems that Porsche don't even care. You see the Speedo plays second fiddle to the rev counter, so it's just passed down onto the left. And the main event in the instrument cluster is your rev counter. Now, Porsche say that a racing driver will want to know, will care more about the revs than the top speed. I'm not a racing driver, so I can't comment, but what I can tell you is that the rev counter is a tiny bit livelier than the speedo. So for that reason, I approve. And I like. I'm afraid I do, I just do. I don't know what majority of the buttons do. Now, I appreciate that 385 brake horsepower this day and age doesn't sound like a lot, but in a world dominated by cars that have seven, eight, 900 brake 
horsepower, we have to remember something very important, that power isn't the be all and end all of what makes a great sports car. For me, it's all about how much power you can tap into and how much power you can work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Allow me to put something into context for you. You could spend a further 18,000 pounds and get the GTS 911, in which case you'll have an additional 100 brake horsepower and you'll achieve a 0.1 of a second faster 0 to 62 mile an hour time. 0 0.1 of a second. Even if you somehow manage to get your hands on a GT3, it's less than half a second quicker, zero to 62 mile an hour. By the way, another disclaimer, I'm not being unkind or discrediting to GTS. I'm sure that has other things that make that very special. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'll find out one day. What do you guys think of this racing yellow? This is the loudest car I've ever driven in terms of colour. I think it's important to remember that for those of us that don't have limitless credit cards or friends in high places that can get us the latest and greatest exotic sports cars, that these little heroes are available for us mere mortals and that best part of 400 brake horsepower can and is a sweet spot for a sports car. Not doing too bad on fuel either. I'm currently averaging 28.8 miles to the gallon. As I mentioned before, for me, it's about how you get there. It's about the drama, the emotion, the theatre. An electric car can get you there with its eyes closed, no problem. But it doesn't mean it'll put a smile on your face whilst doing it. But this does. It just does. Worth it. It just pulls, pulls, and pulls. Let's get serious for a minute. What do I hope for? For this car to be the foreshadow of the things to follow. Having said that, I am acutely aware that that little glimmer of hope, that little beacon of light is slowly diminishing because, well, the future is electric. <clears throat> Let's talk about what's not so good with the Porsche 911. To help me, I've hired some help. Mm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, everything's fine here. The boot is about as reasonable as you're gonna get. What about, what about over your side? Well, I mean, I have the prettiest angle back here, so nothing to report back here. Yeah, at least we tried. If I did have anything negative to say about the Porsche, it actually isn't about Porsche at all. It's just the fact that it's, just, it's a crying shame that there isn't just years and years and years and years of more of this. Who knows, in the next six, seven years, maybe things will change and 911 can remain as a combustion engine car, but it's just that. And that makes me sad because by the time that I can maybe afford one, that might not be available anymore. Never mind. The last car to make me feel the way that this car has was the C63S, a great big V8, which sadly isn't the case anymore. I'm not here to tell you that the Porsche 911 is a brilliant, balanced, poised, sharp sports car. Not that it isn't, it absolutely is, but that would have just given you just another 911 review. No, I'm here to tell you that this car has taken me back to all the times that I buried my face in the car magazines or 
looked up at the posters that were hung on my wall in my bedroom and the time that I watched Gone in 60 Seconds for the first time when they steal that brand new Porsche out of the showroom. Want to guess which one it was? Yep, a 911 Carrera in silver. Or the first time I watched Bad Boys, granted that was a turbo, but watching the chase for the first time. These are all the things that this car has taken me back to, reminding me of all the times that I dreamt about owning one, about just driving one, behind, getting behind the wheel of one. Hell, just even sitting in one. I may be a long way away from owning one. I will one day. But for the time being, I'm behind the wheel of one. And as far as cliches go, one of my dreams have come true. And that is the magic that Porsche sprinkle onto their cars. The dream brought me to the car. But it was the car that reminded me of what my dream was. After all, our dreams, they are the purest expression of who we are.